I'm Andrew Phillips and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to fix a non-working electric airsoft gun. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here, this is a gun that I picked up online on eBay. It was a lot cheaper than what it sells for new. And this is how it was shipped to me here. So let's go ahead and open this up. And what we have here, this is a one-to-one -one scaled replica of the Vietnam era M16, which is what I was looking for. It has full and semi-auto mode. So that's what I wanted. The seller kept reiterating to me the fact that this was in non-working condition. So I asked him, you know, about the battery. He said there was no battery included, but he kept stressing the fact that it did not work. So what I've done is I've picked up a brand new battery. It's fully charged. We're going to test that. We're going to go through all the different diagnosis of things that could be wrong with an electric airsoft gun to cause it not to be in working condition. And then what we're going to do then at that point is we're going to diagnose it and then fix the problem. And then we'll end off the video testing it out, making sure everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and we're going to start um, by testing things and kind of working our way through it and get this thing working. Now where we're going to start are the three most common causes that will cause an electric airsoft gun to, to not be working. The first one obviously being the battery. We have a brand new battery here. I just picked it up. It's fully charged. So we know that the battery is good, but I'm going to show you how to test it. And then we're going to put that in. And you never know, I have bought airsoft guns in the past where they said they definitely didn't work and all it was was a battery issue. So we're going to do that. The next thing that we're going to check is the fuse. That's another thing that can go wrong with these guns, these electric ones. And then lastly, we're going to check the motor. Make sure that the motor's connections are good and that the motor works. And then if, that's, if none of that is the issue, then we'll, go, we'll dive in a little bit deeper um, at that point. But we're going to start with those three. So let's go ahead and test this battery and make sure that we are getting, this is an 8.4 volt battery. Let's make sure that, that we're getting the full charge and then we'll plug it in and then go ahead and test it. So I have my multimeter here. We'll go ahead and put that on the 20 volts. We're going to go ahead and connect it to this battery. As just mentioned, this is an 8.4 volt. It has been fully charged, so we should be getting around 8.4. Sometimes we'll get a little bit more, so let's go ahead and connect to it here. And you can see here we're actually getting 9.4. 16, so it's a little bit more than 8.4, even though it is expected 8.4. So we know that the battery has full charge. Let's go ahead and plug it into the gun and, and see what happens at that point. Okay, disconnect the battery. And your batteries are here in the stock. So if we open up, get the stock open. Okay, here's our, here's our imp, well, you can see here somebody really Frankenstein this thing up, so that could be part of the problem is the electrical. Looks like they may have cut off a large Tamiya connector and tried to install a converter to a mini, which is what the batteries have. Now this particular battery I ordered can take either one. So you have the large or the mini already on there. You can just swap it out, but for whatever reason it looks like that's what they did. So we need to get this off and see what kind of wiring was done under here. But let me go ahead and let... Let's go ahead and connect this. As we know, the battery's already working. So let's connect that. All right. Clearly no power going through, but with this mess right here, that could be the problem. So let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. We're going to unravel this electrical tape and see what's going on underneath and see if that might be our issue. what's under here that could be causing the issue. All right. So here looks like it's an adapter. Yeah, there it is. This is a large Tamiya to mini adapter or converter. And they've probably just kind of Frankenstein this together. So, something's not right with it. Oh, and here you go. Things are just falling apart. So, 
that's definitely an issue. But while we have this open, let's just take a look at the fuse here. This is the fuse. So if we just, let's see here, pop that off. Okay. Here's a look at the fuse in here. And the fuse actually looks good. There's no breaks in it or burns. However, sometimes it can happen under these caps and you won't see it. If you want to see a video I did on how to test different fuses, you can do so via the link above where I show more in depth. But we're going to go ahead and run the, the um, voltage from the battery. Let me bring the battery over here. And let's connect this directly to it and see if we can't get the gun to work this way. And it might just have been the crappy wiring that they did. All right, gun is still not working. All right, so it may be something beyond that. But I'm going to go ahead now. We're going to go ahead and, and get our multimeter over here. Put it on 20. And let's go ahead and make sure that we're even getting voltage on the other side of the fuse. So let me pull this out and ground it in here. All right, so let's see. So before the fuse... You can see right there, we're getting around the 9 volts that we were getting with the battery. So now if we come after the fuse, okay, wait, now something just came loose. All right, so there we go. So after the fuse, still getting the same. So we know that the fuse is good because the voltage is passing through it. So let's go ahead and disconnect everything here. We know the fuse is good. We know the battery is good. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the motor, make sure the connections on the motor are good, test the motor itself. If that all checks out, then we're going to open this thing up and start digging in a little bit deeper to find the problem and fix it. All right, now the motors are usually located here in the pistol grip. So if we lift that up, you'll see here you have two... Phillips screws. We're going to go ahead and remove those and then the motor is underneath there and we'll check the connections on that and then we're also going to test it and make sure that the motor is also working. So let me go ahead and remove this and we'll be right back. All right. So here's our motor here and it looks like our two connections do look solid. Sometimes they can pop off but they do look good right here. A little bit rough though, but I'm going to go ahead and connect the 9 volt uh, battery or 8.4 to it and run it directly to it and let's see if that motor works. All right, so I have the 8.4 or 9 volt, whatever you want to call it, battery connected. I'm going to go ahead and touch it here on the motor itself. So we have that lead connected and let's go ahead and get the ground. Put that on there as well. Okay, well the motor's working, so the motor's good, so that checks out. So there's something now that we need to pinpoint from where the, the battery power is coming in. We know it's clearing the fuse, so somewhere after the fuse and to the motor, there's an issue. So we need to get this stock off and see what's going on in here, because there might be another connection issue. I went ahead and sealed the motor back in, so if we pick up the gun here... Here on the back of the stock, we have two screws. This one here is going to release the stock from this front part here, and then this right here will just take the butt part of the stock off. But I'm going to go ahead and take all this off, and then we'll be back to see, because the, the electric wires are running through here, where they're connecting to the motor and into the receiver, all that. So let's see if there's an issue in there. So I'm going to take this off, and then we'll be right back. You can slide the stock off now and see what's... You can see some of the electric there. Some, all right, well, another fancy electric work done here to the wire. That might be our other issue because these are the wires coming directly from the fuse and then going in here to the motor and everywhere else to power it. So here's another crazy connection. It looks like at some point 
they may have gone ahead and tried to replace this whole wiring section here because you can buy this as a kit which is your positive and negative wires the little fuse box and it also has the battery connector so it looks like they somebody tried to replace it and probably did some more fancy footwork here with the electrical tape so let's take that off and see how that connection looks we'll do the battery directly in here and see if that doesn't solve our issue if it is then there's something with this and then we'll just have to redo all this and i think we'll be good to go really I don't know what they used for the tape let's see here There we go. Stuff is really on here. Look at that. Well, look at this mess. This isn't even connected. This is pulled away from that positive and it's just wrapped in this gunky tape. So that's that. We're going to redo all this crap and we're going to do it right and we're going to solder it. But I believe that's our issue. Yeah, that wasn't even touching. So that was part of our problem. And this is some kind of some kind of duct tape or something that they used here this stuff is just a mess so I'm going to clean all this off and then we'll be back to test it and then solder it together okay so we went ahead we took everything off I'm going to go ahead and connect here directly to the battery see if we can't get this thing to get the gearbox to respond if not we're going to have to open this thing up Let's see what's what okay nothing all right so i'm going to go ahead we're going to take apart the receiver so we can get to the gearbox and um, i'm not going to go through all that here i'm just going to do it in just a time lapse so you can see it but keep in mind if you do have a newer gun, you got to be careful at this point because once you start digging in deeper now, you, you could void the warranty. So you just need to make sure at this point that that's what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this off and we'll be back. So I went ahead and I removed the gearbox from the lower receiver. So now we have access to everything. And we're going to go ahead now. We're going to connect the motor directly to it and see if everything's, you know, maybe working better this way. If not, we'll, we may have to open up the gearbox with these screws along here. And then we can see if maybe there's uh, an issue with it being locked or it could be an issue with the gears in there. So before we even get into opening that, we're going to go ahead and connect the motor up here with everything exposed and try it again and see if we can't pinpoint the problem. Also, while we have it 
all this out, I'm going to go ahead and also redo this wiring here. We're going to solder onto it nice, so that way we have a nice connection since we had issues with it before. So let's go ahead and try that. So here's the motor. We're going to go ahead and reconnect onto it. We had our negative and our positive connections. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to connect the battery back up to it the way that we had it before. And let's see what happens now. All right, so if we pull the trigger. All right. Once again, as we already saw earlier when we had it all together, but the motor's working fine. So now I'm going to feed it into the receiver. And let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get the gun to work because it could also be just the adjustment because these things can be adjusted. It could have been that the, the individual I purchased it from may have not had it all the way up in there because you can adjust it through. There's a little screw at the bottom of the pistol grip where you can adjust that. So let's see here. Okay, got it all connected. So what I'm going to do now feed it up in here. All right. Oh, no wonder it popped off. Let's do this. All right, so we have it in. Okay. Let's get it all the way up in. I don't want to get my fingers caught. stuck. It's clicking but not turning. So let's see. I'm going to put it up in this way because it should go all the way up in there. So let's see here. This is our ground on this side. Here's our 12, our, uh, not 12 volt, I'm thinking in far, as far as cars. Here's our regular voltage. So we have that connected. Let's try it again. Oh, boy. Let's connect that. Let's try it again. Okay, so that's working. Get it all the way up in here. Wait. So that's the problem. It looks like it's not going all the way in and meeting the gears. Let's try it again. Now it's jammed. All right, but either way. Okay. All right, so at least we know that it's working. So I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and take this off. Let me check the voltage of the battery. If the battery's starting to get weak, it may not be strong enough to turn that. So let's give that one check. Let's see here, let's see what we're coming up with. Yeah, 9.05, that should be enough to turn that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to disconnect that, the motor, put that over there. And then um, I'm going to go ahead now. We're going to see if there's any obstruction in here. Sometimes those can get locked, and we'll be right back. So here's what I did here. We went ahead, we stripped that off. I soldered it nicely on this end. Also down here, we took that adapter piece off and just hardwired it right in, wrapped it in electrical tape, so now we have a nice connection. And we've tested it, everything works good. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this here and see if we need to open the gearbox and see what's, what's causing it to lock up. Um, so let's go ahead and look into that, or it could just be the voltage of the battery. So we're gonna get into that next, and then that should wrap this up and we should get this thing working.
I just went ahead and opened up the gearbox just to check everything. Didn't film the whole thing, but uh, everything looked good. I just wanted to check all the gears and springs, make sure nothing was messed up. Gearbox looks excellent, so looks like our issue is what we had diagnosed earlier with the positioning of the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and put the gun back together, and we'll adjust everything, and then uh, hopefully be able to run some BBs through it and make sure everything's working good. I went ahead and put the lower receiver back together with the pistol grip, put the gearbox back in it. Since I have everything all connected up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, it's working. So now if we push it in all the way, so it looks like it's working. Looks like the issue is this right here. The motor is not going in all the way. There's a little pin you can adjust to raise it and lower it, but it's not it's not functioning right, so we need to modify that. And then I think we can put it back together. So here it is here. Right. Battery might be getting weak. I went ahead, sealed up the gearbox, we put it back into lower receiver, put the pistol grip back on, put the motor back in, we adjusted the screw here on the bottom that adjusts the positioning of the motor. We have it in place, I've tested it, and I've also gone ahead and I picked up, um, instead of just the 8.4 volt battery, we went ahead and we picked up a, I believe it's a 9.6, with a full charge we're running a little bit over 11, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to connect this up to it. And then um, I'll show you how it's sounding right now. Okay, this is with the new battery. Because sometimes it, if you have an upgraded uh, gearbox and spring and motor, sometimes the 8.4 volt will not be enough power to run that. That's another thing to keep in mind. You can upgrade either 9.6. I believe there's also an 11.2 or 11.4. Not sure, but I'll put the info along the bottom. But I went ahead and just upgraded to the 9.6 see here sounds great the semi-auto perfect there we go so motor's been adjusted properly so that way it's connecting with the gears where it needs to be we have the voltage coming through a little bit stronger to power all of that everything looks good we've went ahead and redid all the wire connections we have a nice solid connection I'm going to go ahead and put the gun back together, and then we'll be back to fire a couple BBs through it and wrap this up. So now that we have everything reassembled, we've put everything back, we have it working, I just want to kind of just do a quick overview of what we did. The first thing that we did here is we went ahead and we opened this gun up. And if you'll remember, we noticed that there was issues with the harness. So we went ahead and we fixed all of those connections. We also checked the fuse. We verified that the fuse was in good shape. Next thing that we did is we went ahead and we got a new battery, fully charged, put it in there. As mentioned already, I would recommend getting either a 9.6 at the lowest. You can get an 8.4, but depending on if the gun's been modified, sometimes 8.4 may not be strong enough to go ahead and actually compress the spring and get it working. 9.6 or, or an 11.1, something along those lines. After that, what we did is we also checked the motor. We went ahead and connected to that by itself, made sure that was working, checked the connections with that. So once you verify that you've got a good battery, that the fuse is not the problem, and that the connections to the motor are connected properly and the motor's working, those are pretty much your, your main issues. Nine out of ten times, it's going to be one of those. If it goes beyond that, then you're forced to open up the gun itself, and at that point, you need to make sure, hey, do I want to avoid the warranty or not? And at that point, you're looking at the gearbox, or maybe even you could be looking at the gears on the motors, things like that. We did check the gearbox. That was fine. And with, with this particular one here, the motor was not adjusted properly, so it wasn't connecting all the way. And then we did have the issue where the previous owner had just really butchered up the electrical connections, and we had to redo all that, and that fixed it. So that's kind of in a nutshell what we went through in order to get it to work in condition. I went ahead and I put everything back together. So we're good to go. Got everything loaded into this thing. 
let's go ahead and we'll do a few shots on it and uh, see how it works and then that'll wrap up this video. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video on how to fix a non-working electric airsoft gun. I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it helped you out. I hope it was clear and easy to, uh, to go through all the different troubleshooting methods that we did in order to fix this gun. Uh, the cool thing with knowing how to do that is you can get some really good deals. Like I mentioned already, I got this very inexpensive on eBay because it was listed as non-working with having just a little bit of knowledge, being able to go through and diagnose and troubleshoot and fix what the issues were. Now we have a nice airsoft gun for a fraction of the price. So please send me any questions, any comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. So please like this video, subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.